Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're going to work on the pantry table. It's the work table. The dolls do a lot of their food prep for the upcoming meal. And also it has a lot of storage area at the bottom of the table. Now actually the table didn't have that storage room when I first purchased it. I added square sticks to the bottom to create a shelf under the table so I would have more room to display items. So dolls, don't be afraid to modify your pieces to suit what you need to use them for. Now this is a cloth. I just saved it, a small piece of gingham off of something I had when I was a little girl. And I wanted to use it as a cloth to protect the table while the dolls are cooking. And I'm just beginning to gently place pieces and just arrange them on the table based on how I imagine the dolls were working to prepare food. And speaking of modifications, I had an extra towel rack from when I made the kitchen and the bathroom towel racks and I wanted to put it on the side of the table so the dolls would have somewhere to hang dishcloths or cloths they use to protect the table or move things with hot handles. And again, modify your things to work for you. And I was using uh, my tacky wax to stick the items on the table and I did put that tray a little bit close to the edge but that's one of those things that would happen if somebody was cooking and if it falls it's made of metal so it won't break. Now here I want you to just see a little bit of how I arranged the bottom shelf. So let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better about how things look down there. So I've got a crate of cola, lots of casseroles and extra pots and things and a little precious bag of potatoes. The bag is made of burlap dolls. Those potatoes I made years ago. I was probably 12. I guess I'll have to show you how to do those as well. <laughs> and I'm giving you a quick glimpse of the barbecue ribs. I guess I'll have to include that in the food tutorial as well. <laughs> There's a nice little tray of cookies sitting over there in case someone gets hungry in between meals being prepared. And there's also a sweet potato pie there with a slice missing. Somebody's already had a snack. Now here I am arranging a few of the canning jars that I had left over from when I filled the pantry. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out in my playlist. Yeah, there are a few modifications I definitely need to make because I have all these empty pans and bowls with no food in them. So it's definitely time to do a food tutorial. But let me stay focused and complete this video. So far I'm really pleased the way things are looking, but I definitely need quite a few more accessories. But I do want you dolls to stay, take special note of the wear and tear on the table. I did that myself. The table was brand new when I received it, but I had to distress it to make it look like an old work table for the pantry. I used acetone and a file and some sandpaper to get that really worn look. And I scuffed up the bottom of the table as well and around the edges to make it look like a well-worn, old-fashioned work table. I'm really pleased about the way the table is looking. I've added a couple cans to the table, but I definitely, definitely have to create some more food and more small accessories to be fillers. So, yeah, I've got more work to do, dolls. So let's go. So my thoughts of more food led me back to my kitchen table. And looking at the kitchen table made me look at the kitchen chairs. And although I like these little green chairs, they have a lot of texture and I really need something to bring that texture out. So I decided to distress the little green chairs a little bit. Now these chairs came from a Crisenbond kit that I made again many years ago and I've painted them more than once. But I really like this green color. But I do believe that the design deserves a little distressing to really bring out the character of the chairs. So I'm going to use my real brown acrylic paint and just kind of swipe or rub in um, some of the brown paint to bring out the texture of the wood grain and to give highlights to the parts of the chairs that should be highlighted or brought out. Now I'm just rubbing a little bit of the brown onto the chair and rubbing it off because I believe it'll give the chair a look of maybe like some of the wood has, is showing through the paint job 
to just make it look a little bit older and a little bit more distressed, which will look a little bit more characteristic of an old rooming house kitchen. So I'm just playing dolls. I'm really not working with any rhyme or reason. I'm not even using a cloth really. I'm just barely using my fingers and rubbing across it in areas that I think that wear may show up. Now, when you're doing your distressing, there are so many different ways to do it. Now, these chairs are actually made of plastic. They're not made of wood, so I didn't want to take a file or anything to them because it could actually compromise the plastic. So I just rubbed a little bit of the wood in different places that I thought would bring out the highlights and character of the chair design and where areas looked like they would be most likely to have gotten wear. I really love little small projects like this, even though this is a very simple thing and it's it doesn't take a lot of time, but it adds a lot of realism to your scene. Don't neglect the details, dolls. Details, details, details. They mean everything to a scene, and they mean everything to telling your story. And in situations like this, there's no such thing as too much or too little. You just play with it till you're satisfied. Let's compare it to the original chair to see what a difference it's made. That made a huge difference. Yeah, I like the distressed one better. So let's go ahead and do the second one so that it'll look like they're about the same age. <laughs> and there's no real wrong way to do this. You just want where to show up in the areas that have had human contact. <laughs> so while the chairs are drying, I went back to the breakfast room table. And although I like the overall setup, a few things disturbed me. The meat and the eggs look pretty dry. There was no shine, no sign of grease. That's ham and that's fried eggs and that's butter. Those things would be shiny. So I went along and got my craft glaze and decided to just put a light coat of the craft glaze over the items to make it look as though there's a grease or oil coming out of the meat and the eggs. So I'm going to zoom you in here a little bit so you can really see what I'm talking about. So here, dolls, I'm just dabbing a little bit of the craft glaze onto the eggs and the ham. And to me, as I dabbed the glaze on it, it looked like the food came to life. It looked more natural. And it's little details like this, dolls, that I try to um, really focus in on because they bring so much realism to the look of the food. You know, you have to think about what does cooked food look like? I wouldn't want to eat any eggs or ham that look dry. I don't really want to eat anything that looks dry, probably except bread. And even if I was eating bread, I would want butter or mayonnaise on it. So it would be still shiny as well. <laughs> so dolls definitely focus in on those type of details. And now I'm realizing looking at this table, I don't have any bread on the table. No biscuits, no muffins. I mean, I've really got some work to do dolls. And I definitely am going to have to rearrange things and kind of tuck things closer so I'll have room to add the additional food. But I'll worry about that after I've completed the food. So can't you see, dolls, as I put the glaze on the plate of ham, how much warmer and richer it looks? It looks like I could just pinch a piece off really quick and nobody would notice. <laughs> this is another instance, dolls, that I want to encourage you to resist the urge to rush to the finish. Enjoy the process. Work with your details. Make your project so detailed that you can't stop staring at it. Make sure you're fully satisfied with the image you've created and others will love it too. So after getting the ham and eggs together, I realized that my coffee wasn't hot. So I definitely had to do something about that. So I used the little fibers that are in between um, some quilted fabric that I have and I add a little dot of the fabric glaze just as a light adhesive. I don't have to use anything really strong but because the little wispy fibers from the quilt batting don't need a whole lot of adhesive. I just want to arrange them in a shape where they'll look like steam. That's what I used on the pots on the stove to give them the impression that steam was rising. And again, a very small detail but it adds a lot of interest. Now, dolls, be forewarned, this did take a little while, and you can't have on any overhead fans, and you're probably going to have to stop breathing while you're doing this. 
because those little wispy fibers will blow away. And after working with my tweezers and a couple toothpicks, I finally got the little wispy fibers to stay on the coffee cup. And working really closely on my table right now is really helping me to see I do have quite a bit more room, plenty of room to add more food, biscuits and other little things, or maybe biscuits and toast. And maybe even a basket of muffins. Yeah, that'll be nice because I want the dolls to have options for their breakfast. And while I was looking really closely to my table, I noticed the top of the cream looked dry. It was probably filled with some type of paint, so it needs a little shine so it'll actually look like cream. And although this may be a very, very small detail, it speaks volumes in the collection of all the little details together in your scene. So dolls, here's another little tiny and messy little detail. I needed more rags or cloths hanging around. When you're working in the kitchen, you're going to need things to wipe up spills. You're going to need things that are only for handling food and all of those types of things. So I needed to make more towels or rags and I want these to hang on some hooks. Now you notice dolls, these little rags are damp. They've already been dipped in my water and glue solution that I use to cause my fabrics to drape. And I'm just pinning them with these tiny clothes pins to help them keep the shape that I want. Now if you haven't seen the video about how I create my water and glue solution to cause my fabrics to drape, definitely check out my curtain or breakfast table setup video. And this is just a glance of how things looked after I got everything in place. This is really beginning to look like a very well stocked pantry. And there are my little rags hanging among the pots and pans. And there's a shelf from another video. While I found more wall space, I'm definitely going to have to do something with that. But let me stay focused with the projects on my table. So in the midst of all of my other play, I decided to make a little oven mitt out of a piece of felt. I simply cut the piece of felt in the shape of my home state. And now I have an oven mitt. So dolls, hold on tight because I'm about to take you on a ride. So you get to see how my mind works in my creativity process. I found a couple spare pieces that look like they would make a lock. And so since I decided I may need a lock on that pantry cabinet because of the top shelf, I thought this little square piece of wood and the little half of jump ring would make a nice lock. So I allowed little Gretchen to paint the square and the jump ring with a coat of my metallic silver paint by Tusters. So here I allowed little Gretchen to do her thing with the paint, and she did really good. She stayed right on that little piece of cardboard. Not too messy this time. <laughs> so while that was drying, I started to look at my little cabinet. So that lock is going to be for the handles of this door. But you see I added some little extra linens to the shelf, and they're just folded up um, pieces of her handkerchief really white clean handkerchief folded it up so it would look like tablecloths and things so that looks fuller and nicer now this is just a small piece of actually a cut off piece of straw and i just randomly wrapped it and tucked it in there to look like some rolled up fabric so little things like that dolls will really fill up your space and give it a little variation now that little open shelf is full and well stocked and I'm just giving you a little peek inside the pantry. For those of you all who haven't seen my pantry video, definitely check that out in the playlist. So here I am back with the lock. And I actually drilled a small hole and glued in a piece of wire as my um, lock latch. I decided the jump ring was kind of large and the wire was easier to manipulate for what I needed to do. Now here I'm using my ball stylus to create the illusion of a keyhole with my acrylic black paint. So here dolls, I didn't make an actual hole. I just needed to give the impression of a hole. And here I'm adding super gel glue to the corners so I can add some really small nail design studs. So yes dolls, nail supplies come in handy with miniatures. Many times they're the perfect size and they add so much detail and interest. And they have multiple sizes and they come in different colors, gold or brass colored ones. 
and they really come in handy for adding little details like this, especially with a really small project. Something like a lock can get lost in a scene or room setting, but if you add little details like the brass studs, it causes it to stand out on its own. And I'm definitely going to need to distress it, add a little dirt and a little rust to make it look like it's really old. But let me stay focused, dolls. So let's leave that to dry. So dolls, I couldn't get over these jump rings and I actually did find a purpose for them. Because if you have a lock, you're going to need keys. So the jump ring is a perfect key holder. <laughs> so here I am with the medicine box. And so I do need to make a lock for that as well. So I painted the two parts of the closure of the front of the medicine box silver. And again, I used my tester's paint because you know I love that to create a metallic finish on any type of miniature. And the great part about the testers is it doesn't need an undercoat. It'll make any surface look metallic from wood to plastic. So always keep yourself open to change and enhancement. Even when you've already made or created an item, you can make it better. So moving on to the lock that I'm actually going to use on the medicine box. I'm using that leftover little piece of jump ring that I was going to originally use on the first lock. And I decided if I closed it up a little bit and made it a little bit smaller, it would work out well for a lock for the medicine box. So I used my wire cutters to just kind of pinch it and pinch it close. Now be very careful with your fingernails and your fingers when doing something like this because you have to get a firm grip on it to break the tension for it to bend. And I used a small piece of wood that came off the end of one of my coffee stir sticks. And I guess, dolls, this falls into my category of miniatures from trash, a broken jump ring, and the tip of a coffee stir stick makes a lock. But it works. It's a perfect size. And here is another moment for little Gretchen to do her thing. And I laid the little lock on a piece of tissue paper. And I'm allowing her to use the testers to paint the little lock of the metallic silver as well. And right here I'm holding the tissue paper down for her so that the tissue paper will stay in its place. Great job, little Gretchen. You're doing a really great job. So now we're going to allow that to dry. So now that the little lock is dry, I can go ahead and do the finishing and add it to the medicine box. So there are my keys. And yeah, just showing you what I actually made the lock out of half of a jump ring, and the tip of the rounded coffee stir sticks. So yeah, I'm going to just leave that there so you can see it. So here I was just adding the latch portion to the medicine box, and I drilled two small holes so I would be able to add the bent piece of the jump ring. And this is just showing you inside my box. So after I fitted it, I really didn't like that original latch, so I made another one. And so I'm leaving these type of... Uh, things here in the video dolls to let you know that sometimes you have to try more than one thing to get the result that you're looking for. If it doesn't work, try something else. You don't give up because you run into an obstacle or a hindrance. You just try something else. And when I tried a little piece of bent wire instead of the really rigid jump ring, it worked better in this instance. Now the jump ring was great for the key ring. And it was actually great for the smaller lock. But when it came to making the latch for this box, the wire was better because I was able to bend it into a smaller C shape to accommodate the space. And now I'm adding the little mark on it to give the impression of a keyhole with my black acrylic paint. And I think that looks really great. And again, details, 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 dolls. Now on that latch, I actually decided I do want to add a couple of those little studs. So I'm shaking a few out and I added the Gorilla Gel glue to the corners. And I just want to add a couple, what I think would look like little rivets on those two metal portions of the latch for the medicine box. It's kind of funny. I didn't film it, but I actually did add rivets to the tiny lock. Actually, three of them, one on each side of the keyhole and one right under the keyhole. 
and also around the edges of that bottom latch, I did trim it out on that portion that looks like wood so that the entire piece looks like solid metal. And there's my last two rivets. And I think that looks really good. Now that that's done, let's get to the fun part. <laughs> so here we are. I have some acrylic uh, copper color. And I'm going to use copper, rust, and black. And just smudge everything all up. I want it to look a little dirty, slightly rusty. I want it to look like an old beat up lock that's on the pantry cabinet. Now remember, this is the one that I made for the handles of the actual pantry cabinet that has the top shelf with the liquor and the wine. And this is the one I put on the box just now. So I'm just aging them both together, just slopping it around just to make it look like it's old. Now I'm not real particular when it comes to aging things. I just kind of smudge it up until it looks good to me. And again, this is one of those instances where you have to work on it until you're satisfied with it, dolls. And I am. And there we go. We've got a nice old latch and lock on the medicine box. And you see there, I painted that portion metal. So it looks nice and old, like a nice old latch. It's such a great feeling when you're done and you feel satisfied with what you created. <laughs> Now, dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe, and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know, dolls, I'm really getting close to 1,000 subscribers, and I want to do something fun to celebrate that or commemorate that with you, dolls. So I'm working on some things for you. So, Dows, I just want to take this moment as an opportunity to say thank you to all my subscribers. I appreciate that you've chosen to go along with me on this journey. This has been the beginning of something really wonderful, and I'm delighted that you're here with me. And I also want to thank those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.